Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on economic policy. Today we're going to talk about fiscal policy. Specifically, we're going to talk about how the government finances a budget deficit. In our previous lessons, we established that the government usually runs a budget deficit when it takes an expansionary stance. That is, when government expenditure is greater than tax receipts. So the question I'm trying to answer today is, where does the government get the extra money to fund the shortfall between its spending and its revenue? I'll also discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages for each option. The most common way of funding a budget deficit is by borrowing from the private sector. The government does this by selling new securities in domestic financial markets. These securities promise later repayments with interest to the lender. So in effect, the government is borrowing money from the private sector lenders. A disadvantage of this method is that it could cause the crowding out effect. When the government opts to borrow from the private sector, they're increasing demand for existing borrowable funds, leading to higher interest rates. With the cost of borrowing increased, investments may decrease. Or in other words, private sector investments get crowded out due to the public sector's borrowing. You may also remember from the balance of payments topic that increased interest rates will also attract greater capital inflow and increased debt servicing costs flowing overseas. The currency appreciation from the capital inflow could also decrease international competitiveness and worsen the bog's deficit. This is how the crowding out effect can also impact external stability. Having said all this, the crowding out effect does not often happen in reality. Most times that the government runs a budget deficit, economic growth and investments are often slow anyway, so there's already a lack of demand for borrowable funds. The increased demand from the government may not make too much of a difference on interest rates. Next, instead of borrowing from the private sector, Another way of funding a budget deficit is by borrowing from the RBA. This is also called monetary financing. The federal government sells new securities to the RBA. The RBA prints and creates money and gives it to the federal government to finance the deficit. This is the method used to finance some of the government's spending to stimulate the economy in 2020, such as the JobKeeper program in response to coronavirus. The advantage of this method is that it avoids the crowding out effect, but the disadvantage is that it could lead to monetary inflation. Monetary inflation is when the economy is already at productive capacity. Printing and creating extra money would just mean increased money supply chasing the same amount of output leading to increased prices. A third way of financing a budget deficit is by borrowing from overseas financial markets. The federal government gets the RBA to sell the government security in overseas markets for foreign currency. The RBA holds this foreign currency in its reserves and gives the amount in Australian dollars to the federal government. The advantage of this is that it avoids some of the above issues, such as the crowding out effect and monetary inflation. However, the disadvantage is that it is in effect borrowing from overseas and therefore will impact foreign debt levels and external stability. Another way that the government could finance a budget deficit is obviously using an existing budget surplus. Otherwise, this surplus could obviously be used to repay debt from the above funding methods or fund tax cuts. Another source of a quick funding boost is the proceeds from the sale of public sector assets and privatization. This is often part of a process called asset recycling, which is when the government uses these proceeds to purchase new infrastructure assets. However, these proceeds do not impact the underlying cash balance of the budget outcome because one-off transactions are excluded in this measurement. I hope that my explanations have made it easier for you to understand how the government finances a budget deficit. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss future videos. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.